Hello, I'm Dr. Pierre Simon, and it's wonderful being back with you. Today we're talking about mob psychology, part two. With the demonstrations going on, it made me think a lot about it. So I thought, well, we should talk about it a little bit and understand the emotional aspects and the individual aspects, you know, what happens to the individual in the uh, in the crowd, in the in the group, in the crowd, in the in the mob. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about that as we spoke uh, about it last time. Uh, I'd like you to know, though, that at uh, New Horizons Institute of Counseling, we're for healing peace and, and harmony. Uh, we're for you, and we're there to help you through whatever issues might be going on. We're a faith-based ministry, and that basically means we approach things with faith. Uh, faith in God. And, and as a Christian counselor, uh, we talk about those things that uh, you can talk about without feeling like the secular person may say you're religiously preoccupied or something of that nature. Um, we're, we're there to bring God into our situations and allow God to help us through the problem solving of a crisis and the dealing of personality issues, uh, emotional issues, whatever it might be. And in doing so, it's sort of like discipleship, as the Bible would, would say in the New Testament. Uh, it, it's bringing new parts to you. It's tuning you. It's helping you to go forward in your life happier and with more hope. Well, gangs, demonstrations, crowds, groups, we spoke about the group in the previous episode. Uh, do we call it these, these demonstrations, these gatherings? Do we, do we call them uh, groups? Do we call them crowds? Do we call them mobs? Uh, do we call them rioters, uh, or, or do we call them? Do we call it summer camp? And, if, and for some, it may seem like a summer camp for them with the campfire and all that, but unfortunately, it turns into other things as it uh, grows. Today, we're focusing on the crowd, and next episode, we'll be focusing on the uh, the mob and and what happens in. Uh, inside the mob to individuals and, and in general to the group, uh, the number of groups that with, are within the crowd or the mob. Uh, crowd identity, you know, there's a lot written about it in, in sociology uh, uh, and in other areas, but basically uh, when, you, when you're looking at a crowd, you're looking at a large group of people. So it goes beyond just a group as we spoke of previously. It may be made up of, of, of many groups, uh, but generally crowds are, you know, individuals that are there, maybe a small groups gathering together with the crowd, but they're gathering as individuals mostly, and they're disorganized. So a crowd tends to be somewhat disorganized uh, and can be unruly in, in a way. They're pressed together, and that, that's an important characteristic of a crowd. The pressing in, uh, the, the, the number of people, um, it's not spread out, like it's you no know, six feet, uh, but there's this pressing that's occurring. Uh, and, and it's a temporary collection of people. It's, it's not a permanent collection. It's not something that's always there. Uh, they may leave and come back, but the crowd is temporary. Uh, the interacting in a crowd, the interactions, just like in a group, when we interact in a group, when I go to, let's say, a home group uh, where we talk about God with Bible or uh, the sermon that was spoken of uh, the, the Sunday previous, uh, uh, we, we're learning, we're growing, um, but also we're getting influenced in some way by 
others in the group uh, or by the subject that we're talking about. And if we're kind of on the border of, of something, it may help us to take that step that we need to take in that direction of believing a little differently than what we may have believed. So uh, there's um, influencing going on. In the crowd, it's amplified um, or intensified. The influencing is stronger in the crowd than in the group. You can take a group of eight people, gotten along very well for maybe a year, two years together, uh, thinking very much alike. Uh, certainly they have their own unique identities and everything. You take that same group of eight people, you put them in a crowd, the crowd being greater, the crowd pressing in, the stress increasing, the crowd ends up influencing those eight people differently than how they were once influenced. You lose that sense of identity. So a crowd uh, is a strong influencer of people within the crowd and outside the crowd, certainly. But uh, there's a common interest in, in most crowds, not all crowds, but uh, in, in most crowds, there's a common interest or goal. Uh, that uh, the picture I have there, you know, here's people at uh, a museum. Um, I'm assuming it's the Louvre in, in Paris, um, looking at the pictures, looking at the artwork, looking um, at whatever they may be looking at. They're not all there to see one thing. They're not all there to do one thing other than peruse. Uh, to enjoy the artist's work. Uh, and they're pressed together when there's something good to look at. And what happens? You know, I'm looking at the picture and I'm thinking, you know, uh, one person lifts up the phone to take a picture and the other person says, oh, I have a phone, I should take pictures. And they're influenced to start taking pictures. And that's what happens. How, you influence people in a crowd. You go to church, same thing occurs. When you know, somebody does something, you may be influenced to follow along with them. Unlike the more orderly group, so remember we spoke of how groups tend to be more orderly. Um, there's not uh, an unruliness or disorganization about a group. Uh, a crowd uh, lends itself to being noisy. You know, if you think of a crowd, it's generally not quiet, so it tends to be noisy. It, it can be disorderly uh, unless it's a very structured crowd. Um, but most crowds, they have a breakdown of types, and we're going to talk about that in a moment. Individual identity, as I, I spoke about a little earlier, is weakened. And you know, if not careful, if you don't have a strong identity and you go into a crowd, your identity is going to be weakened and overtaken by the crowd, which is why it's so important to be sure if you're going to participate in a crowd or a demonstration, which we'll be talking about next time, uh, if you're going to participate, make sure you know who you are, you're strong in your identity, and you're not going to let individuals, other persons in the crowd, influence you into doing something you may regret for the rest of your life. Well, crowds of people uh, may gather for parties. Uh, they may gather for concerts, they may gather for demonstrations. So well, there's, a, there's a lot of crowds going on. Uh, and when I think of uh, parties, you know, I think of the kids, you know, they, and I think of the birthday parties that kids have. And they're like, they're like a school of fish. You know, they, uh, um, where one goes, they all want to go. And, and, the, and then another one goes over here, they all go over there. Um, they, they follow the lead of 
someone, sometimes it's a single person in the crowd, the birthday boy or girl, um, or it may be just another person, and they're moving around. Sort of like watching them in a soccer game, little kids, and, and there's the ball, and they're all chasing the ball. It's like a school of fish. That's, that's a crowd. Well, there are four types of crowds, and um, each type has its uniqueness. Um, but I want you to understand that crowds are not bad things. It's what we do in the crowds that can be bad. Uh, it's what the crowd result is, what, what happens after the crowd or while the crowd is there. Most of the time there's happy crowds. I call them happy crowds. You know, three out of the four uh, types of crowds I call happy crowds. There, there's a purpose, there's a good purpose in it. There's, they're doing something for a good cause. Um, they're happy that they're doing it. Uh, they feel proud of themselves for doing it. They're speaking uh, what they're believing to be true through being in the crowd. Uh, so a gathering of people with no, uh, no common bond or or identity um, it is a crowd, but you can have you can have a, a bond of belief um, in a crowd. Uh, bond of belief. I, I'm thinking of with all the demonstrations. I'm thinking of Martin Luther King when I was a boy, um, and you know I would ask my dad, you know, why is this happening? What's going on? Um, and uh, I, I remember when we around six years old, we uh, I went to uh, Miami Military Academy for a year or two. I think it was two years. Um, six years old, there at the railroad station, and I looked, and there's two water fountains. One says for blacks. One says for whites. Uh, two bathrooms, sets of bathrooms. One says for blacks, one says for whites. I couldn't make sense of it. Why? Why is that? And I asked my dad, I said, why is that? You know, and he shook his head, you know, and he said, that's wrong. And uh, he, you know, he had a lot to say about it. Um, and it and it was wrong, uh, and it's changed, and, and it's getting better uh, as the years go by things change, and hopefully things change for the better. So the casual crowd, uh, they have a place to go. They gather, uh, like the mall. You go to the mall, it's casual. But not everybody has a purpose in the mall, uh, the same purpose, I should say. Some go there just to walk around. Some go there to have a meal. Some go there to window shop. Most people that go to a mall, I'm going to guess, I haven't read studies on that, but I'm going to guess most people that go to a mall don't buy anything. They window shop, they walk around, they look, they want to be around people or others. It's a cool place to be in the heat of the summer. Uh, when I watch people coming out of malls, um, I tend to see more people without packages than people with packages. But of course, there's quite a few with packages as well. Um, it's a casual crowd. A conventional crowd, the second type of crowd, gathers for specific purposes such as church. Uh, maybe someone wants to go hear someone speaking, a lecture or something like that. Uh, so a casual crowd is a relatively structured crowd. Unlike the crowd that goes to the mall, the casual crowd, there tends to be a certain amount of structure or orderliness about the crowd. So using the church as an example, you walk into the doors and you're greeted and, and they direct you where the service is uh, or if you need to uh, go somewhere else, uh, you ask and they, they direct you there. There's order there, right? When you walk through the door, you go to the auditorium where the service is located and there are ushers who 
uh, help you to find a seat that you might prefer or um, to find a friend that you're looking for. The ushers are there to help structure people coming in and finding a place as soon as possible uh, and to be as comfortable as possible. Uh, there's a certain amount of structure there, orderliness, uh, uh, and yet the people that are going there are not going there to be the center of attention or to uh, be loud or, or boisterous. Or, they're going there to hear the message. And so their participation is somewhat secondary um, or even sometimes irrelevant, but mostly secondary to the purpose of why they're there, to hear the preacher, to hear the teaching, to learn something, to praise God or whatever it might be at church. Then there's the expressive crowd. So the third type, that expressive crowd, well, it's what it sounds like. Uh, they gather primarily to make noise. Uh, expressive crowds, uh, they want to express themselves. So they, they want to yell, scream. Uh, they go to the football games and they want to cheer for their team. They go to the basketball game, baseball game, just soccer. Uh, I hope I didn't leave anybody out. Um, they want to make noise and they want a little stimulation. They, they want the adrenaline pumped up, so they go to the racetrack and, uh, and the cars go by and they feel that rush of adrenaline and, and they're yelling or whatever else they, they might be doing and uh, stomping and clapping and everything. That's an expressive crowd. You know what? Those are happy crowds for the most part. And I like being around happy crowds, uh, but I don't like being around unhappy crowds. Uh, makes me feel unhappy. I don't like to feel unhappy. I always blame my wife if she has me watch a movie with a sad ending. You know, it takes me a couple of days to get over that sad ending. And I always say, oh, look what you did, you know. You, you made me watch this, you know, and so she knows not to, not to let me watch anything that has a sad ending. Those are three types of the four crowds. In the next episode, we're going to be talking about the fourth type, and the fourth type is the acting crowd, the crowd that sometimes is considered the mob, uh, the, the unhappy group. Um, and we're going to speak about that in detail. Uh, so I hope you follow, up, follow us up with that. What are the expressive truths regarding what we spoke about today? Those, those truths from um, what we might identify as proverbs or logic or uh, uh, good thinking, good sense. Um, and co that co also coincides with the Bible. Uh, what does the Bible say about these types of things? And certainly there's so much to talk about there. I'm just highlighting a few things, but uh, I look at it as in Jesus Christ Messiah, I'm not crushed, perplexed, persecuted, or abandoned because God loves me. So I can be in a crowd that presses me in uh, that's stressful, uh, that's upsetting, and I can't find a way out. But I can breathe because I know God loves me. I know I'm safe. I know He's got my back. And whatever happens, He already knows about it. Whether He's going to allow it or not, it's part of my life that He has planned for me. That eases my tension when I'm somewhere that I really don't want to be. My faith life is made public and its true colors are revealed when I'm around other people, when I'm in groups, when I'm in, in crowds. Uh, my, the proof is in the pudding. Are you really a Christian? What is your faith life on the outside? Your inner faith life, you may be thinking you're strong faith, you're, you're calm, you're, you're at peace, you're actualized. You know, you gotta, I speak to a lot of 
actualized individuals, um, teachers, professors, whatever. Well, I'm actualized. Oh, but then you put them in stress. You, you, the proof is in the pudding. Um, their true colors are revealed. Um, I forgive. Sometimes somebody does something, catches me off guard. I might feel a little upset at first. Then I realize, oh, you know, he might not have meant that. She might not have meant that. Or maybe they did, but I'm not going to take it personal. I'm giving it up. I'm not holding on to it. I forgive. And when I forgive, I learn to leave the past behind me, to move forward to growth and greater hope. It's okay to demonstrate. It's a wonderful thing to be able to express yourself in a free country. It's okay to speak up in a group or in a crowd if it's appropriate. Um, we're in a free country to be able to do that. But if we obsess over those things and those things are negative or those things are bringing us down because we're obsessing over it, we're letting the past control us. We're not learning from the past. We're being torn down from the past instead of learning from it and looking ahead, going forward. Uh, typical example is go to the booths. If you're unhappy with elected officials, vote them out. If you're happy, vote them in. You're doing something, but you're doing it in a way that is peaceful and in a way that expresses, but you're learning and growing through the process instead of being held back by a ball and chain of something that has happened in the past. Now, certainly when you go to counseling, you talk about those past things because you want them healed. You, you want them, uh, those strongholds, as the Bible would put it, torn down so more of you can be free to go forward. In that first scripture in 2 Corinthians that I spoke of, here's what it says. We are hedged in, pressed. It sounds like a crowd, doesn't it? On every side, troubled and oppressed in every way, but not cramped or crushed. We suffer embarrassments and are perplexed and unable to find a way out, but not driven to despair, were pursued, persecuted, hard driven, but not deserted. We're not standing alone. God's with us. We're struck down, struck down to the ground, but never struck out and destroyed. That was Paul talking about the crowds in his time. Similar things are going on today in the crowds of our time. But Paul was telling us, with God, bad things may happen, but he helps us up and he helps us forward. He helps heal the wounds if we turn to him and allowing him to help us. And he helps us to build a better future. I hope this was helpful for you today. Next time we're going to be speaking about the mob, the riots, and whatever else. Uh, and I hope that if you've gained something from this, push the like button, subscribe. We'd love to hear from you if you have questions or thoughts. God bless. Bye.